In this unit, we will describe the method of maximum likelihood. The method of maximum likelihood is a way of estimating the value of an unknown parameter. This method is widely regarded as the best method of point estimation. This is for various reasons. One of those reasons is that the method will always give you a feasible result. We've seen in an earlier unit that this isn't always the case with the method of moments. Also, the method of maximum likelihood can be used when we have censored or truncated data. We'll talk more about this in a later unit. Another important reason is that maximum likelihood estimators, or MLEs for short, have fabulous asymptotic properties. This is something else that we will cover in a later unit. Let's now discuss how we carry out the method when there's only one parameter to be estimated. The process is as follows. First of all, we write down the likelihood function. We want to work out the value of the parameter that makes this likelihood function as big as possible. And in order to do that, we need to differentiate and find the turning point. However, it's often easier to differentiate the log of the likelihood function than it is to differentiate the likelihood function itself. The log function is a monotonic increasing function. So the log likelihood is maximized at the same point as the likelihood function itself. So step two of the process is to take the natural log of the likelihood function. Then we differentiate the log likelihood function with respect to the parameter that we're trying to estimate. We set the derivative equal to zero and we solve the resulting equation to work out the turning point. Finally, we check that the turning point is a maximum and we can do this by examining the second derivative of the log likelihood function. Now let's think in a little more detail about the first step, which is to write down the likelihood function. Suppose we have a random sample of size n from a discrete distribution. The likelihood function is just the probability of obtaining the data that we've observed. We use the letter capital L to denote the likelihood function and little xi denotes the observed value of the random variable capital XI. So the likelihood function is the probability that the random variable x1 takes the value little x1 multiplied by the probability that the random variable x2 takes the value little x2 and so on up to the probability that the random variable xn takes the value little xn. The likelihood function is a function of the parameter that we're trying to estimate. And note that if we have just a single observation, then the likelihood function is just the probability of obtaining that single value. When there's just a single observation, there is no product in the likelihood function. Let's have a look at an example of this. Suppose that the number of claims in a month arising from a certain portfolio of policies has a Poisson distribution with mean mu. Suppose also that the number of claims observed in one particular month is eight. In this case, the likelihood function is the probability that the random variable capital X, which denotes the number of claims in a month, is equal to 8. And since X has a Poisson distribution with mean mu, this probability is equal 
to e to the minus mu times mu to the power of 8 divided by 8 factorial. Now suppose we have collected data from two different months. Suppose that in one month we had 8 claims and in another month we had 10 claims. If we let x1 denote the number of claims in the first month and x2 denote the number of claims in the second month, then the likelihood function this time is the probability that x1 is equal to 8 multiplied by the probability that x2 is equal to 10. Both x1 and x2 follow a Poisson distribution with mean mu, so the probability that x1 is equal to 8 is e to the minus mu multiplied by mu to the 8 divided by 8 factorial, and the probability that x2 is equal to 10 is e to the minus mu multiplied by mu to the power of 10 divided by 10 factorial. This expression can be simplified to give us c times e to the minus 2 mu times mu to the power of 18, where c is a constant. Note that in a likelihood function, the value of the constant term is not important. Now let's think about how to construct the likelihood function when we have a random sample of size n from a continuous distribution. When the random variables are continuous, instead of having a probability function, we have a PDF. So in this case, the likelihood function is the product of the PDFs. Again, this is a function of the parameter that we are trying to estimate. And if we have just a single observation, there's no product in the likelihood function. Let's have a look at an example where the random variables are continuous. Suppose we have a random sample of size n from an exponential distribution with parameter lambda. In this case, the likelihood function is the product of the PDFs. So it's the product from i equals 1 up to n of lambda times e to the negative lambda xi, where xi denotes the ith observed value. This expression can also be written as lambda to the power of n multiplied by e to the negative lambda times the sum of the xi's. Taking logs, we find that the log likelihood function is n log lambda minus lambda times the sum of the xi terms. Now to work out the maximum likelihood estimate of the parameter lambda, we differentiate this log likelihood function with respect to lambda. And we get n over lambda minus the sum of the xi terms. This derivative is equal to zero when lambda is equal to n divided by the sum of the xi's, or in other words, when lambda is equal to 1 over x bar. We can easily check that this is a maximum turning point by looking at the second derivative of the log likelihood function. We've just seen that the first derivative is n over lambda minus the sum of the xi terms, and differentiating this again with respect to lambda, we see that the second derivative is minus n over lambda squared. This is negative when lambda is equal to 1 over x bar, so we have a maximum turning point. In fact, we can see in this case that the second derivative is negative for all values of lambda. So we can now say that the maximum likelihood estimate of lambda 
which we'll denote by lambda hat, is 1 over the sample mean little x bar. The corresponding maximum likelihood estimator of lambda is the random variable 1 over capital X bar. We'll now move on to consider the case when there are two or more parameters to be estimated. In this case, the general method is similar to that used in the one parameter case. The steps are as follows. First of all, we write down the likelihood function. Then we take logs. Then we use partial differentiation to differentiate the log likelihood function with respect to each parameter that we are trying to estimate. We set each of these derivatives equal to zero and solve the resulting simultaneous equations. Finally, as before, we should really check that we have a maximum turning point. However, this final step is more complicated when there's more than one parameter to be estimated, as it involves looking at the matrix of second derivatives. And in the multiple parameter case, this final step is beyond the scope of the syllabus. Now let's take a look at an example. Suppose we have a random sample of size n from a normal population with parameters mu and sigma squared. Since the normal distribution is a continuous distribution, the likelihood function is the product of the PDFs. And this is equal to the product from i equals 1 up to n of 1 over root 2 pi times sigma times the exponential of negative 1 half times xi minus mu over sigma all squared. This can also be written as some constant c times 1 over sigma to the power of n times the exponential of negative a half times the sum of xi minus mu over sigma all squared. Now taking the log of this likelihood function, we obtain the log of the constant minus n log sigma minus a half times the sum of xi minus mu over sigma all squared. The final term in this expression can also be written as negative 1 over 2 sigma squared times the sum of xi minus mu all squared. Now if we want to work out the maximum likelihood estimates of mu and sigma, we need to differentiate the log likelihood partially with respect to mu and then partially with respect to sigma. Differentiating with respect to mu, first of all, the log of the constant will go to zero, minus n log sigma will go to zero, and the final term will be minus one over two sigma squared, which doesn't involve mu, so is treated as a constant when we work out this partial derivative. Then we bring the power down, so we multiply by two, we also multiply by the derivative of xi minus mu, which is negative 1. And finally, we drop the power on the bracketed term by 1. So we have the sum of xi minus mu. This expression can be tidied up and written as 1 over sigma squared times the sum of xi minus mu. Now, differentiating the log likelihood function with respect to sigma, again the constant term will go to zero. Minus n log sigma becomes minus n over sigma, and the final term becomes minus a half times the derivative of one over sigma squared, which is negative two over sigma cubed, times the sum of xi minus mu all squared.
And this can be written as negative n over sigma plus 1 over sigma cubed times the sum of xi minus mu all squared. Now setting both derivatives equal to zero and solving the resulting equations simultaneously gives us the following estimates. Mu hat, the maximum likelihood estimate of mu, is the sample mean, x bar, and sigma hat, the maximum likelihood estimate of sigma, is the square root of 1 over n times the sum of xi minus x bar all squared. In other words, sigma hat is the n denominator sample standard deviation. Next, we'll talk about the invariance property. This is an important property of maximum likelihood estimators, and it says that if theta hat is the maximum likelihood estimator of theta, then the maximum likelihood estimator of a function, g of theta, is g of theta hat. In the previous example, the maximum likelihood estimator of sigma is the square root of 1 over n times the sum of xi minus x bar squared. Note that we're using capital X's here since we're talking about the estimator, which is a random variable, rather than the estimate, which is just a number. It follows from the invariance property of maximum likelihood estimators that the maximum likelihood estimator of sigma squared is sigma hat squared. And that's 1 over n times the sum of xi minus x bar all squared. We now conclude this unit with a summary of its main points.